Hey everybody, happy Tuesday. Thank you for joining me. Uh, first things first, why am I wearing glasses? I'm not being a pretentious prick. I just had eye laser surgery yesterday and I need to protect my eyes from brightness and my hands going into my eyes. I was at the doctor's office yesterday. I said, hey, uh, he said, stay away from screens. And I said, but what about Come Tip Tuesday? I need to do my Come Tip Tuesday. And he said, oh, you're the guy who makes the Come Tip Tuesdays. Okay, you can you can go do that, but then go back to your Audible books. And <laughs> I said, Taxi, you know Nuke? No, okay, this is falling apart a little bit. Uh, let's just start. It's gonna be a short one. It's gonna be, but it's gonna be, it's gonna be useful. I, I think it's gonna be useful for a lot of people. Uh, so, often your script can get very, very slow. <clears throat> and it's generally, a, this, it's it's the same type of notes that will slow down your comp a lot. It's gonna be uh, samples from motion blur. It's gonna be heavy defocused nodes. It's gonna be paint nodes sometimes, trackers, stuff like that. So there are ways to sort of disable them uh, while you're working. So they only turn on while you render. And that's what we're gonna look at today because it's very useful. Let's start with a simple example here. We've got some sort of a, can we, yeah, okay. We've got fireworks and we wanna like make it, let's clear the cache so you can see how slow it loads. Clear the cache here and then go back to the magic deep focus. It loads actually quite fast here. I don't know what's happening. Usually it's much slower. Anyway, you've got the defocus nodes and I've got them on top here. You've got, well, blur, Defocus, Median, Convolve, Z Defocus, Magic Defocus, Bokeh, PJ Bokeh, that kind of stuff. And we're kind of going from left to right in this case in how slow they are. So especially in heavy comps, it will really, really drag down your viewer time. Um, so I would say like Magic Defocus or PJ Focus is like 20, sometimes 50 times slower. So what if we want to use the defocus, the magic defocus with the nice bokeh, with the stretched out uh, barn door type bokeh. Uh, what if we want to use that for rendering, right? That's our end result. But we want the blur in the meantime to kind of show what our comp looks like. Because otherwise we have to wait 30 seconds every time to, to load a frame while we're doing something else in the bottom of the tree, like keying or whatever. Um, that's our that's our subject that's our uh whoever like the interviewer or whatever um so the way to do this there's two ways you've got the uh, gui way which is graphical user interface as you can see on the top here and it's as simple as going into a switch node Go into expression by by clicking the uh, equals or go here by add expression and then go dollar sign GUI. What this does, so you can see it being a one. What this does is when the graphical user interface is on, in other words, your viewer, uh, it will be it will use the one pipe. So. See, now it just turns to the blur instead of it looking like this with the magic defocus. That's a lot faster. And now if we would render this on the farm, if you're at a big company, you definitely have like a server farm or something. If you would render this on the farm with a right note, it would come out using the magic defocus while you always preview with the blur notes, making your comp much, much faster. Super useful. I can't do that. <laughs> I can't do that because I am working locally right now and I don't have a render farm at home. So even if I render this here, it will count the the um, uh, the, the GUI as as on, which you know. So there's a there's a, there's a separate way. If you're if you're working locally, you can also use nuke executing. Uh, this, this is just a little Python line. Nuke.executing, open bracket, close bracket. Same, same idea, it just works a little different. So if we go into the switch here, and go into the expression, and we use that nuke.executing open close, 
and we click instead of the R button, we click the Python button. You can see it switches to zero. So it's kind of the opposite as the dollar GUI. Uh, so the, instead of it saying, hey, the graphical user racer is on, it's saying right now, hey, Nuke isn't executing. So this will uh, be zero when you're viewing and it's one when you're rendering. So this is when you're rendering locally. So you can see the pipes here are switched. If you don't want to switch the pipes, you can also just put a, uh, wait, you can put not in front of it and then it's the opposite. So then it's, uh, but you know, why not just switch the pipes? So when it's not executing, it's using the blur like here. So we're viewing with the cheap, fast blur. But then when I render, and this is cool, this is, this is dope. Uh, when we render, it's taking a long time. That's a good sign. We render, we got the fireworks. There we go. We can see we have the nice bokeh version instead of the blur version that I'm viewing right now. So that is application number one. Super useful. Um, definitely, definitely use this in big scripts. It will, here because it's such a small script, it doesn't seem to be a big difference in terms of loading time, but I promise you it's huge. Um, right. Oh yeah. The, the other thing I wanted to say is when you do do this and you're working with different compers, <clears throat> they might not know that you're doing this. So let them know at least like do something like GUI or add like a, add like a node or something to make them aware that you're doing something, something funky, but they're like, Hey, why is it not loading? Uh, yeah, second application. Why do I have multiple viewers? That makes no sense. Okay, cool. Second application. Let's say you have a little bit of a particle system. If we, ha we have some particles. Let's actually maybe make our frame range a bit larger so we can actually see this load. So we got some particles, embers or whatever. I just threw this together really fast with some gravity, some turbulence. And the particle is just a nice little square, sphere, sphere. Well done, English. Anyway, looking through it right now, it has no trouble loading. But if these were embers, there would be a bunch of motion blur on it. And the samples would be 64 or 60 or at least a lot, a lot more. And the loading time is dragged down a hundred fold. So same idea. You could use that switch, right? That we have on, on the, in the top here, but you could also use a different type of expression. So you don't need that many nodes. So if we go into this, oh, did I already do this? We go into this node where it says samples one, you can go dollar sign G U Y. And then you go, um, you go question mark one double colon and then 64 for instance. So what this would mean is if G U, G -U I use one, one sample or else 64. So you can see it's on one because we're using the graphical uh, graphical interface. Um, but once again, like I said, this doesn't work for me because I'm not using a render farm, but this will work uh, if you're working at a big studio and, and, and you render on their farms, it will come out with the, um, let me just switch the pipes here, with the motion blur. And you can, you can see why it's, useful to do see how long this takes to load just because we have a ZD focus so this has the motion blur like you can see so this is how we wanted to render and then if I switch the pipe this is how it go on this is how it would show it to us in the viewer but because I'm working locally again we can do the same with executing uh, bracket close bracket open. So let me show you how what that looks like. You 
write it a bit different because it's Python and you would just simply say 64 or the amount of samples that you would want if nuke.executing open bracket close bracket else one makes sense right 64 when executing otherwise when we're viewing it it's merely one so if we're okay i was scared for a little <laughs> i thought it wasn't working so we're looking through it now it obviously doesn't have any uh it doesn't have any motion blur you can see the bokeh is perfectly uh 0 0.5 aspect ratio like it's not it's not motion blurred but when I render, when I render just one frame, you will see something awesome. Jesus, I need a new computer. All right, particles. Boom, it has the motion blur. So while you're working, you have the nice fluid uh, viewer because you're not loading 64 instances of the particles uh, in the scan line and instead just one right super useful use it so that's the second way we can apply this gui or uh, nuke executing little expression the third way you could use it is by simply disabling the node so you would go into Say it's a rotopaint. Rotopaint notoriously can be kind of funky if you have um, if you don't use a frame hold or this is a bit it's it's a bit of a black box. It just usually it, it it's it's pulling way more power than it should basically. So if we were to disable it, we could literally do dollar sign G U I by uh, did I show you by right clicking the disabled box here add expression sign GUI and now when we're oh, that was the wrong node huh let's try that again dollar sign GUI and now it's disabled when we're viewing it and it will be not disabled when we're not viewing it when we're rendering on it on the farm same goes for when we're working or we want to render locally so then we would Add expression, simply nuke executing, and then press the little Python button again. So we want this to be a one because, wait, do we want this to be a one? When it's executing, it should be zero. No, 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 this is right. This is right. No, it's not right. When it's not executing, we want it to be one. So we can say not nuke executing. So now it's disabled and when we start rendering it will turn in to a one and then it will be on so these are all the ways you can use these little expressions to really make your comp fluid a lot more smooth and get rid of all this just uh, man i hate slow comps you know how it is uh that's it this should be very useful to a lot of you uh you know i'm not a big coder i i, I just other people who can do that way better than me but when it when when a when a simple expression comes along that really makes your day easier you uh you pay attention so have fun with it definitely try it out and uh, i'll see you next week thanks for watching bye bye